Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. In Egypt, the leadership of the opposition, some of which is negotiating with Suleiman, the vice president, other parts of the leadership are saying they will not negotiate until Mubarak steps down. That includes Mohammed al-Baradai, who's saying no negotiations until there's no Mubarak. And there's a lot of debate and discussion going on in the main square. Apparently, 150 or 200 young people in the square sat down and said, we're not talking to the foreign media anymore, we're going to talk to each other, and started a debate about where they're at and where they should go. And there's clearly a lot of confusion about that. Now joining us to discuss who's leading this movement is Gilbert Ashkar. Gilbert is a professor of development studies and international relations at the School of Oriental and African Studies in London, England. He's the author of the book, The Arabs and the Holocaust, The Arab-Israeli War of Narratives. Thanks for joining us again, Gilbert. Thank you, Paul. Why don't we start with al-Baradai, because everyone saw him as potentially this unifying figure, but it hasn't quite worked out that way. I think al announced he won't run in any elections for president, that he wants to be seen as someone that can help in the transitional phase. But what, what do you make of him? After uh, ending his uh, last uh, mandate at the International Atomic uh, Energy Agency, um, well, thought that uh, he might get into Egyptian politics and uh, become a kind of alternative to the existing uh, uh, Mubarak regime. And so he thought that his, uh, his prestige uh, after uh, his years at the head of the Atomic Agency and the Nobel Prize that he got and all that, the fact that he became uh, very well known uh, in Egypt, of course, as a famous Egyptian, a world famous Egyptian, uh, would uh, give him some, some chance of, of playing a role. And he was also, I think, con convinced and I don't know uh, if, if there were, in, uh, you know, behind the scenes any kind of uh, wheeling and dealing between himself and, and Washington, but he thought that he might be, uh, you know, a, a challenger of Mubarak and uh, a more credible figure for, uh, uh, with m more legitimate kind of, uh, of government. Al-Baradai showed some real backbone. He stood up to the U.S. on... During Iraq, he, he, as head of the atomic agency, he says there's no nuclear program in Iraq at a time Bush and his cohorts were saying there was. Uh, he stood up to them pretty much on Iran. He never went along with the, the idea that the Iranians had a nuclear weapons program, and he used some very strong language against any kind of military attack on Iran. So he, he, see, he seems to have some backbone under pressure. He has a certain degree of, uh, of honesty, which I think is... Uh, is uh, undisputable. This is not some kind of Machiavellian uh, person. There is something genuine about his uh, his beliefs. I mean, he's a, he's a liberal. He's not a radical. He, he, seen from Washington, this is uh, he doesn't represent any threat. I mean, uh, Mubarak also was, uh, for instance, uh, um, quite uh, critical about the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Mubarak did not support the U.S. invasion of Iraq. And that was even I mean, worse as an attitude than, than whatever uh, Barada he took as, as a position. But that's, that isn't the, the big problem. The United States I mean, the, knew that uh, this invasion of Iraq anyhow was not, was not uh, uh, popular. And the same goes for uh, a war against Iran. Uh, it is uh, uh, something that not everybody, uh, be, I mean, even among uh, the friends of the United States, including the European partners of the United States, not everybody believes that this would be a good idea. And actually, the United States itself is not absolutely convinced. The only people who are very much enthused about an idea of military action against Iran uh, are Israel. And we know that when the Israelis asked the, even the Bush administration for a green light that, that during the last months to, to, of the, the, the Bush administration to attack Iran, they didn't get it. So that's not, not a big deal here. Uh, Barade is not seen as, you know, some kind of radical or anything but the, like that. But the Israelis he, must really not like the idea of al playing such a role. He's on the record of saying he's against the siege of Gaza. I mean, from the Israeli point of view, they would far, far prefer uh, Suleiman or, or someone else to al would they not? Of course, they, they would prefer uh, the, the, the same kind of people to, to remain at the head of the Egyptian. In fact, they want to keep Mubarak if they could. Yes, or, or Suleiman is, 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 is absolutely fine for them, but uh, they wouldn't have a major problem with Baradei, uh, all the more that he just um, 
making statements that he would that uh, the uh, Egyptian Israeli treaty would not be uh, affected that it is uh, rock solid and such statements so he he is not perceived as anything of a threat uh, by uh, anybody and at the same time he has this image of a relatively honest liberal person in Egypt which uh, uh, explains why uh, a wide range of opposition forces uh, supported him as you know a figurehead against uh, Mubarak because other than Baradei I mean if I ask you can you name uh, a person of the Egyptian opposition you would have uh, uh, difficulty finding any name because there are no uh, prominent figure. Of course, the Egyptian would would say uh, uh, there are some uh, Ayman Nur, Hadin Sabah, etc. But they are hardly known uh, outside of Egypt. And even in Egypt, they don't uh, command uh, uh, real mass popularity. So Baradei, with his international prestige and all that, was thought to be uh, a good candidate for the opposition. That's why a lot of opposition forces. Uh, including after some hesitation, even the, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, joined in this idea that, okay, let's uh, uh, back him, because at least as a transition figure, um, he is no threat even to us because he doesn't have a constituency of his own. Uh, he can't, and he's not the kind of person who might be uh, tempted in turning into uh, uh, another dictator. Uh, he's not the stuff that dictators are made of usually, or at least it doesn't uh, look to be that, that kind of stuff. What other leadership is emerging over the course of this uh, uh, amongst the young people or amongst workers' organizations and unions? Uh, what other leadership is either there or seems to be coming into being? Well, in, in this movement, uh, young people have played a tremendously important role. And in Tahrir Square and everything, uh, you, uh, everywhere in the movement, in other cities, I mean, and uh, ever, see, the, the young people, uh, youth movement is, is playing a very, very central, very important role. Organizations like the uh, April 6 youth movement, which was founded in 2008, in uh, the origin is a solidarity with the uh, huge uh, uh, wave of uh, worker strikes that uh, was uh, happening at the time. Uh, this movement has been instrumental, actually, in in the in initiating the the, the present protest in Egypt, and are still playing a major role. And other. Uh, uh, movements are there and they have recently formed a coordination committee uh, in Tahrir Square uh, of uh, what they call uh, the wrath, the revolution of wrath uh, and uh, they have this uh, this kind of, of uh, you know representative committee of uh, of various uh, sectors of uh, of the, the young people involved in the movement and they are exerting a real pressure uh, which is felt in and translated in the way the other forces of the opposition, those who went into, into these negotiations with uh, Suleiman, including the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, uh, were were not in a comfortable position, and they had to, you know, multiply statements to, to the tune of saying, uh, "Well, uh, nothing could be done without the Shabab." The Shabab means the the young people, and uh, this formula has been very much repeated. It's a testimony to the weight and importance of these young people in the mobilization. That's uh, the, the probably the most uh, striking development in the the political uh, uh, on the political scene. Uh, in Egypt. In the next segment of our interview, let's talk about the history of this regime and how it becomes a military dictatorship. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Gilbert Ashkar on The Real News Network.